Towards the end of 2019, the European Union established the most ambitious environmental objectives of European history. These objectives were included in a series of related documents such as the European Green Deal or the new Circular Economy Action Plan. In these documents it is explained that one of the main goals is that Europe becomes the first climate neutral continent by 2050. And one of the main strategies to reach these objectives is through a regenerative growth model that gives back to the planet more than it takes and the boost of what we call circular economy. And probably now you're wondering how much this is going to cost. Well, the truth is that according to a study ordered by the European Commission, applying the principles of circular economy could increase an additional 0.5 the GDP of the European Union and create up to 700,000 new jobs. So with all these figures on the table, I'm sure you are as convinced as the present Ursula von der Leyen about the need of maximizing circularity in our economy and society. In fact, nowadays we all know that, for example, we shouldn't throw away a plastic bottle. Instead, we should recycle it, for example, as fibers for an isolation of a coat or a sleeping bag. Or what's even better, we could clean it, we could change the label and reuse it again as a bottle. So, okay, we all know that circular economy is really important and that reusing is even better than recycling. But what if I ask you, what is the largest thing that we could reuse and recycle? A car, a train, a building... My dear friends, the answer to both questions is something that is 5.5 million kilometers long. It is manufactured and maintained by 10,000 companies employing about 180,000 people. I'm talking about the amazing European road network. Or to be fair, only the roads made of asphalt, which in Europe are more than 80%. Asphalt, the great tool for circular economy. Now, if you don't know how asphalt is made, I could say that it's something similar to baking. Imagine that I melt chocolate, I mix it with nuts, I compact it and I cool it down again. As a result, I will have an amazing chocolate bar ready to be enjoyed. Asphalt, the black material that you can see in most of the roads, is basically the same, just that instead of nuts, we put aggregates, for example sand or gravel, and instead of chocolate, we put a viscous liquid that we call bitumen. So coming back to the analogy of the chocolate bar, let's say that if you are not completely satisfied with the result, you can always remelt it again, mix it, compact it, cool it down and make a new bar. Basically, this is what we do with asphalt when the road is old or is damaged. We extract the material, we remix it and we reuse it again in the same road or in a different one. In addition to this reuse, asphalt can also be recycled, for example, as a granular material for road construction or for any other application of civil engineering. It is important to highlight that the best that we can currently do with most of other construction materials is recycling, so the reusability of asphalt, which also can be easily repaired, raises this material to a higher level in the sustainability hierarchy. The European Green Deal and the new Circular Economy Action Plan prioritize reuse before recycling and encourage business to produce and customers to choose products that are reusable, durable and repairable. And as we have seen, this is practically the definition of asphalt, which makes it one of the best tools for our governments to meet the ambitious European objectives. Asphalt Team Figures With all this in mind, it's not surprising that the reuse and recycling figures of the asphalt sector are nowadays already spectacular. If you have a look at the latest annual results published by EAPA in the famous annual publication Asphalt Team Figures, you can find that in 2019 about 50 million tons of reclaimed asphalt were available, out of which 70% was reused in the manufacturing of new asphalt and extra 22% was recycled as a granular material in unbound road layers and other civil engineering applications. And most important, this means that only 8% was actually waste put to landfill. But we reckon that not even this is enough, an asphalt industry keeps developing and implementing new innovative solutions that allow us to increase the content of reclaimed asphalt in new roads. Ensuring circular economy. Finally, it is also important to highlight that although these trends and expectations in European policy can facilitate and increase the reuse and recycling of reclaimed asphalt for the construction and maintenance of new roads, it can also boost a series of initiatives by other industries or sectors aiming at introducing a wide range of byproducts and waste materials into asphalt. 
In this sense, the European Asphalt Pavement Association has been expressing caution over the last years about the negative consequences that some of these materials could create into asphalt, especially in terms of quality, durability, environmental impact or health and safety of workers. And what is worse, the use of some of these waste materials could even go against the principles of circular economy. And yes, I know it sounds crazy, how recycling a waste material can be against the principles of circular economy, right? Well, think about this. Asphalt is a material that is 100% reusable and recyclable back into the same or other applications. And for several cycles, the use of some waste materials and byproducts into asphalt could potentially compromise this property at the end of the asphalt service life. In addition, some of these materials that are being proposed as recycled content for asphalt are already regulated as contaminants in the asphalt that we extract from the road. And now we are talking about adding them deliberately? Quite often, these potential ingredients are problem waste from other industries which cannot reuse them themselves. And it may look like when we put them into asphalt, this cake of bitumen and aggregates, they become more palatable. But the truth is that they may result in just turning a valuable road into linear landfills full of waste that cannot be recycled now or in the future. And for these reasons, and despite seeming paradoxical, the use of these materials could contradict the principles of circular economy, as they would make necessary to dump into a landfill asphalt, a material that otherwise would be 100% reusable and recyclable even for several life cycles. If you have doubts about what to use into asphalt, I recommend you to have a look at the IAPA publication on the use of secondary materials, byproducts, and waste in asphalt mixtures, which you can download for free on the IAPA website. And with this, we reached the end of this video on the fascinating world of asphalt reuse and recycling. So now the questions are for you. Do you know the current rates of asphalt reuse and recycling in your country? Do you know what are the current available techniques and best practices to reuse asphalt? Do you know what are the main regulations affecting the reuse and recycling of asphalt in your country and in Europe? You can find this information and much more in the documents available for free on the APA website. Leave us your comments and stay connected for more interesting videos. Thanks for watching.